Alright, so today we're at Whole Foods and I'm going to bring you inside and show you a few things that are just staples in my diet. Uh, just like with training, I'm really big on variety in my diet. So I'm only going to show you a few things. Uh, it's by all means and only eat this kind of a list. But if you're confused maybe where to start, these are a few good options and then you can always branch out from there. I usually, uh, it depends, you know, off season or during prep. Uh, usually about the same foods, just different amounts. So something that I always try to incorporate are berries because I love them and they have a lot of antioxidants and they usually have a good amount of fiber per carb ratio. Raspberries are my favorite. Uh, oh, that's not a raspberry. <laughs> Okay, well there's some raspberries here, but you can get, <laughs> you can get strawberries. Um, blackberries, blueberries, obviously everyone knows what the berries are. So those would be my favorites for sure. Um, typically, again, again, it depends on the amount, but typically 50 to 100 to 150 grams uh, of the actual fruit. And then I'll mix it up the sources. A lot of times I'll mix up because it was on sale. <laughs> so we're in Whole Foods right now, which is of course a little bit pricier than some places. But they still have things on sale if you like to shop here. And then if you're not at Whole Foods, you can find, of course, sales on berries. Uh, and stock up if you want. Um, if you know you like something and it's a really good sale, a lot of times I'll buy it and then just freeze it. So my most favoriteest food <laughs> for all meals, but definitely breakfast, are avocados. Uh, if you see any of my food posts, you know that there's usually an avocado somewhere in there. Uh, and this will change during prep too, of course, as my fats get lower. Uh, I'll have less avocado, uh, but typically I will have avocado at least once a day, even during prep, even if it's only an ounce, right? That's four and a half grams of fat, not too bad. And then sometimes I'll do tomatoes too. Conveniently, they're located next to each other. <laughs> so sometimes I'll just slice up, and I got the sticker all over the I'll just slice up some uh, tomatoes and uh, avocado, and I really, really like it together. Uh, and you don't have to do this for breakfast. I do this for breakfast a lot. Uh, with my eggs and I find that to be super tasty uh, but you can do that throughout the day and just kind of make like a tomato avocado salad <laughs> all right so again if you see my food post you know that I'm always eating broccoli slaw or Brussels sprouts uh, a lot of times I'll get stuff like this because for me raw veggies are way easier to eat uh, sometimes I don't know where I'm gonna eat like right now we just ate and I ate my food cold because we were busy and so a lot of times raw veggies are way tastier obviously <laughs> cold so things like peppers or cucumbers, um, all this kind of stuff right here, or um, broccoli slaws and lettuces, of course, are excellent, uh, just cold. And I just literally, it's already ready, and then you just kind of pour it however much you want. Now, this is like my new favorite thing, the shaved Brussels sprouts. So you can either put this in a salad, or I'll just roast these in the oven, obviously, or a pan. And they're really, really convenient, and they're really tasty. Uh, if you don't like Brussels sprouts, I don't know what's wrong with you. Put some olive oil on it, and bake it up, and that is excellent. Okay, so if you saw the clip for the veggies, you know that I obviously like convenience, right? So things like raw vegetables are really easy to eat and they're easy on the go. Potatoes are also really easy to cook uh, and also really easy, I think, to eat cold. Like there's some things that I just won't eat cold, like rice is horrible cold. <laughs> uh, but I don't mind potatoes if they've already been cooked, uh, eat them cold. Everyone's different, so maybe you're like, that's really gross, Lauren. I don't know what you're talking about. So typically I'll either eat, you know, any kind of potato, honestly. So here we have sweet potatoes, which are excellent. Um, or sometimes they'll have like fun potatoes, like in a bag and like the purple potatoes or whatever. Basically, again, same thing. I either cook them in the oven. I don't really like microwaving them because I feel like that makes them super dry. So I'll just chop them up, season them, roast them, and you'll be good to go. So these are good any time that you need carbs. Again, fast, quick, easy, no preparation. <laughs> uh, and these are my favorite brand. A lot of the other ones I think taste like air. Uh, and there's more carbs in this. There's 14 grams of carbs per cake. And I know the plain ones from Quaker I think are like seven or eight. So this is double. So if you're tracking, you know, be aware of that. But I promise you, once you have this, you'll never go back to the other ones. These taste so much better. So this was on display here. I'm not really sure why. But uh, <laughs> any of the rice cakes are really good, especially when you're traveling um, or if you're really busy that day and you know, OK, I'm gonna, I need 30 grams of carbs. I mean, just grab two of these. They can put stuff on top, or you can just eat them by themselves. And it's an excellent, fast carb option. OK, so now we're in the bean section. And I'm really big on actually just getting like the bags of beans soaking them, cooking them. It takes longer than the canned, of course. 
um, but I I just I like it better uh, and I like knowing you know kind of exactly the amount sometimes the, the cans can be like funky and there's more fiber when when you do it this way so I really really have been eating beans almost every day at this point just because they're pretty cheap uh, and you get a good amount of carbs protein and fiber so it's an excellent just all-around food source and if you're lower on carbs you can have that plus veggies and I find that that's a lot more satiating than having like this much of like a potato or maybe rice and you can have a little bit more beans and again filling good macros and they're pretty cost-effective then you can come down to rices and grains. So let me see what they have here. Uh, of course, you know, rice, any kind of rice you want. White, brown, jasmine, you know, whatever. Usually I just get a plain rice and I'll season it myself. I'm really big on seasoning. Uh, and then I like other greens too. Let's see if they have them. Yes. So I love quinoa. Um, I think it, it tastes really good, especially if you season it properly. <laughs> um, the other ones that I eat a lot are farro. What do they have here? Um, this has, this is like a mix between like a rice and a pasta. It's like pretty chewy. I think it's excellent. Uh, and then the one I don't see here is, Fri oh, there it is, yeah. They have everything. Is Frika, and again, it's just another grain. Um, you know, there's nothing magical about these. Uh, I just like switching it up, switching up my sources, and there's actually a lot more fiber typically in uh, these. And some of like these kind of grains versus rice. So that's usually why I choose these. Uh, I'm a little bit of a fiber uh, freak, if you can't tell. <laughs> so my favorite part about breakfast is eggs. And it'll depend uh, off season or during prep how many I have. But typically I'll have two to four whole eggs and two to four egg whites uh, in the morning. Sometimes I put veggies in my egg whites, sometimes I don't. I usually do these over easy. Uh, and then I really, really enjoy cooking it in coconut oil. Uh, and that, again, depends, the amount depends on if I'm off season or prep. And sometimes I'll just use spray if I'm pretty low on fats. All right, so now we're at the meat section, which I use for any meal basically besides breakfast, just because I stick to eggs usually for breakfast. Uh, and I'll usually go for none of this. Uh, I'll usually go for chicken breast, uh, or I'll go for an extra lean turkey breast. For me, the fattier turkey, I don't really like having it because I'd rather have steak or some kind of beef. So for me, I don't stick to the fattier turkeys, but if you like that and you don't like red meat, then I would say um, the 94 is a good option if you have a little bit more fat in your diet. The 99 can be a little rough if you uh, overcook it, so just make sure you don't do that. So my favorite protein to eat is steak or red meat in general. Uh, when you're prepping, obviously, you know you have to be conscious of the cuts. Uh, you can't really go wrong with a top sirloin or something like that. They're usually pretty lean and they also taste very good. Uh, and then depending on the ground part, like right, they have 95% lean here. It's actually on sale. Uh, and sometimes, like that's usually the leanest I've seen is, is 95 or 96%. And that's usually only a few grams of fat. You can make uh, burger patties with that, or you can even mix it with the turkey that we saw that I said can get pretty dry. And then you make a good mix, and then it's not so it's not so bad very flavorful and it's not too much fat. All right, so we're in the best aisle ever, AKA the nut butter aisle. <laughs> Every fit girl is obsessed with this. I don't care who you talk to. We all are obsessed with nut butters. So typically I'll do some kind of crunchy peanut butter uh, or just whole nuts. Uh, almonds or cashews are typically my favorite. So. Uh, honestly, there's so many options at every single store now. I don't know how one person could choose. <laughs> uh, pick what you like. Uh, sometimes the macros differ if you get like one of the like fancy ones that like has some other shit in it. So make sure you look at that if you're tracking. Um, I usually just stick with like the plain go-to, just crunchy peanut butters. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but one of my favorite oils is coconut oil and then also uh, extra virgin olive oil. So between those two, that's what I use honestly the most to cook with, to season with, marinade, and sometimes like I'll just put together like a little salad and just, if I have a few grams of fat, I'll just add some olive oil, or I'll cook my eggs in coconut oil in the morning, kind of like I mentioned. They're both excellent options. The only thing is don't heat this too high because it can burn a little bit, uh, whereas olive oil is fine. I actually enjoy olive oil mostly just drizzled on stuff because of the flavor. And then there's, of course, if you look around, there's like a zillion like specialty ones like avocado oil or flaxseed oil or hazelnut oil. 
there's all these different things. Um, those are obviously a little bit more pricey, but they're usually just for tasting and like for salads and stuff. So depending on your budget and depending on what you're looking for, uh, you can find a lot of options here uh, and you know fit your fat needs with this. Um, the thing I like about oils uh, or butter too, like Kerrygold butter is my favorite, is because it's just fat. If you're tracking, again, if you're doing something like a nut butter, there is other things in that, of course. So you have to kind of be, if you don't have any carbs left but you only have fat left, this is a really good option to either marinate your food or put it on after you cook it. So we're in the dairy section, right, which I used to really not have any dairy, just because I just didn't really like it that much, but now I've actually really learned to enjoy it. So it's really good, especially with Plug Blackstone Lab protein powder. Uh, so I make shakes typically every day, and I really find that milk helps with the consistency. So um, they don't have here, actually, the milk that I use. It's called Fairlife milk, and it has less carbs and more protein, so it's really, really good. Uh, the chocolate milk is like to die for. But any milk is good, and then if you are maybe lactose intolerant, or you have some issues, or you just really don't want a lot of calories, I will usually go with, uh, can't find, there we go, uh, and that's still not it, but the silk, either cashew milk or the almond milk, I usually go with the unsweetened kind, uh, just because I don't, the other ones are too sweet and weird, so a lot of times when I'm prepping, if I'm really hungry, um, this is when I'm really hungry, I'll just have like a cup or two of that and it's only like 50 calories. And you know you heat it up, and then you feel like you're like drinking something really special, uh, but you're really not. But <laughs> so it's a really good option to um, maybe if you do have an issue or you just want less calories because well that one's gonna be oh here we go. So as you can see, there's only two grams of fat and one carb. So I mean there's 25 calories. So you really can't go wrong with that. And again, if you're looking for something that just has like a filler and not necessarily like a whole like a whole source of things like carbs, fats, and proteins like milk would be, that's a good option. And yogurt too is another amazing dairy that I really kind of fell in love with the past year or so. Uh, a lot of times, ooh, they have really good flavors here. Uh, I, <laughs> again, scroll. Uh, a lot of times I'll add fruit like we saw in the beginning, and that can either be part of breakfast as like a protein and carb source, or I can just kind of make a parfait like later in the day, maybe add some nuts, something like that. Uh, Siggy's is not even really yogurt, it's called Skier or something like that. It's, it's really good though, it's super, super thick and creamy, so that's excellent, and there's a lot of protein in that, or Greek yogurt, of course. Um, usually I'll end up buying like the big the big ones and then just kind of partitioning it out uh, and then that way it's a better price uh, and you can add kind of whatever you want. I usually get the plain ones because uh, I'm boring <laughs> uh, and then I add up my own stuff to it, my own honey because again I find that it's a little bit too sweet with the regular ones and then they add you know a lot of carbs to it. So play around depending on your carb count, depending on your flavor preferences. Uh, Usually most stores have a variety of things, and apparently Whole Foods has a lot of Siggy's <laughs> flavors. <laughs> Hopefully y'all liked this video, and if you were kind of stuck on like, what should I start with, what should I go to the store this week and get, hopefully that helped. I try to incorporate some tips too on things that I find uh, really work for me and my lifestyle. Uh, like, you know, eating vegetables that are raw usually help me, right? I prep them easier and I can kind of take them on the go. So the ones that I showed you were only, you know, two or three options. And there are so many different types of things within the store. So really, you know, get creative, get imaginative. This is a good place to start and definitely branch out from there.